Welcome to Franklin Covey's Be a Better Leader series. I'm your host, Lena Rinne. I serve as the Senior Vice President of Professional Services and Client Facilitation for Franklin Covey. On this season of Be a Better Leader, we're talking all about how to amplify your organization's impact. At Franklin Covey, we help leaders develop the skills necessary to lead their teams to greatness. Many leaders have the technical skills that the role requires, but they lack the management and the motivational skills to lead others effectively. In this episode, we'll be talking about how to amplify your organization's impact by leveraging learning science for lasting L&D impact. So recent studies show people value professional development opportunities now more than ever. In fact, a Gallup survey found that over 60% of people said upskilling opportunities would motivate them to stay at their current job. And the result? More and more companies are investing in L&D solutions to meet their organization's growing needs. Here with us today to talk about how leaders can invest in the right solutions for the organization is Franklin Covey's Executive Vice President of Products for the Enterprise Division, Will Hodling. Will, thank you so much for being with us again today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I got better lighting this time around. so. Uh, <laughs> It's perfect. And Will, it was so fun to talk to you about Franklin Covey's strategy and the content, people, technology. So let's dive in a little bit more around that. So let's talk about L&D programs. We know that not every program is created equal, even if L&D leaders are implementing all kinds of different things. It's not all equal. So what do leaders need to look for when they're searching for that perfect solution for their own organization? Absolutely. So. Um... I think that a perfect solution should appeal to the head of the buyer into the heart of the learner, where a great solution needs to appeal to the head of the buyer, meaning that it actually needs to work. So a solution, if it just is, you know, people going into a room and finger painting and petting a therapy dog and having a great time, and it doesn't actually transform behavior in the organization, okay. that's, nice that's, not, that's not a great solution. Yeah, maybe, maybe fun for a Tuesday afternoon, but that's not a great solution. So yeah. I think buyers need to ask themselves, does this work? And I think programs, solutions that work are evidence-based. There's been a ton of research over the course of the last 30, 40 years on how to change individuals' behavior um, and how to do so in a way that generates collective behavior change and, and results for your organization. So when you look in and evaluate any solution, you need to ask yourself, what is the evidence that this program, that this solution will actually generate the type of results that I'm looking for? Um, is it utilizing learning science? Is it incorporating automated reinforcement to overcome uh, uh, the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve? Is it generating intentional application, et cetera? So as a buyer, you need to think very analytically about the success of a, of a program or solution. You also need to put yourself in the shoes of the learner though, and ask yourself, would this appeal to me as a human who's gonna be spending my Tuesday afternoon or my Monday night going through this? Is this going to appeal to the heart of the learner? Is it engaging? Is it enjoyable? Is it compelling? Um, for many of the learners nowadays, when deciding L&D programs, you're not competing with another L&D program, you're competing with Netflix and with TikTok and with you know, them sending personal emails. So you really need to come up with something that appeals to them on an emotional level. Uh, so I would say I kind of summary of a great solution is something that appeals to the head of the buyer. It's evidence-based and can sustainably generate performance improvement and appeals to the heart of the learner. It's an experience that is kind of emotionally resonant and compelling enough to kind of block out all of the other distractions that learners face. Thanks. Well, really well said, because there is more than one stakeholder with our L&D buyers, right? And there's more than one stakeholder for all the leaders listening. Uh, it is how do I drive results for my team? But, you know, each person has to opt in themselves. So making sure that I, I love that head and heart piece of it. You know, Will, you came to Franklin Covey um, a year and a half ago with Strive, an acquisition that we made that was technology based and has been a really exciting part of Franklin Covey's evolution. You talked about the head of the buyer and the evidence based. And that's that's one of the things that technology can provide us is so much of that data. Um, do you want to talk more about the meaning of data as you're making those decisions? But even more than that, the meaning and the purpose of data as we look at behavior change. Absolutely. So I think there's kind of three ways that I think about data being important for generating these, you know, transformative learning experiences for an organization. The first is data as a way to diagnose challenges and identify areas to work on. Second is data as a motivator 
And then third is data as a way to validate efficacy. I often think about the parallels between exercise and education. Both exercise and education are like canonical New Year's resolutions. Everybody at the beginning of the year wants to lose 10 pounds, go to the gym more regularly. Everybody wants to learn a new skill, develop a new habit, etc. Um, if you look at studies of how people have stuck to New Year's resolutions over time, you find that 10% of people who pick up a new exercise habit are still doing it a year later, but only 1% of people who pick up a new educational habit are doing it a year later. So it's very hard to stick with habits over time, but exercise is 10 times more likely. People who choose an exercise habit are 10 times more likely to stick with it. I think a big reason for that is a lot of exercise has data involved to help motivate you to stick with it over time. So for example, with exercise, let's say you decide you want to exercise more regularly as a way to lose weight. You'll be able to step on a scale and see your progress very clearly. Right? There's no real equivalent for learning. There's no stepping on a scale and seeing you've lost five pounds moment for learning. And so one of the ways that we want to use data on our platform, and we think data is valuable in education, is providing that step on a scale experience where you can actually see based on peer feedback how you've improved on a given skill over time. So I think data as a motivator, I think is one of the ways that you can use data. Another way to use data, as I said earlier, is data as a diagnostic tool. So we have a 360 assessment that people use at the beginning of their experience with Franklin Covey. And that's a way that you can get feedback from managers, peers, direct reports, compare that with your own assessment of yourself. And then we use the data to identify skill gaps in areas that you could work on and improve. So data to help diagnose areas for you to improve. And the final is data as validation of a job well done and of behavior change. So, you know, let's say um, at the end of a year, you've been learning a bunch of skills. We can use an updated version of that 360 assessment to help show how you've been able to improve on those skills. And we can aggregate that for the company to show at the company level kind of change in behavior and results from these programs. So I think data can help diagnose issues. You can use data to motivate people throughout, and then you can use data to validate that the behavior change experience that you've gone through actually worked. Thank you, Will. And if I can just underscore, you know, I'm someone who is motivated by personal data. So while it's not the scale for me, it's, you know, being able to close the rings on my watch or it's being able to track over time how many minutes I've exercised. And it feels like for many organizations focused on behavior change, they're learning to leverage that switch in people's brains, right? That's a really important one for me. And I think Franklin Covey's doing really um, interesting things in that regard as well. But if we can go, I, I really see when you're saying, you know, tracking progress for many of our leaders, whether they're L&D buyers or they just lead a team, boy, that's important because it feels like that can be so elusive. Like I might want my team to be doing X, but I, I just don't, I have no idea. I don't know how they've been doing. I don't know how they're doing now. I don't know the X to Y. So, so really insightful in terms of those three different ways that we can use data. Uh, um, let's let's dive a little deeper into the kind of heart side of it. So you mentioned head and the data. I think that's really important. But when we look at the learner and the experience that they're having, um, what does it mean? And what do you see in your long experience around this industry? What what creates engaging content? What is that learner leaning in towards versus leaning away from? Would you say? Absolutely. So um, I think at the at the core of creating an engaging kind of emotionally resonant experience is identifying and highlighting the shared experience that managers that leaders have and creating a space for vulnerability authenticity and then growth from that so i think a lot of people who are managers the first ever time they are going through this experience as buddy to boss transition alone they don't have people who they can talk to about their management challenges. They don't feel comfortable talking to their boss and being kind of like honest and open about the ways in which they're struggling in their new role. So I think great learning experiences, yes, it shares content and yes, it helps people with skill development, but it also is a little bit of kind of group therapy. It's a little bit of uh, kind of getting together with other people going through a similar experience creating space for people to be emotionally open and vulnerable and honest about the challenges that they're facing. And then through that embracing of challenges, grow and kind of improve. There's a, there's a line, pain plus reflection equals progress. 
that I think a great learning experience creates the psychological safety for people to open up into the pain that they're feeling, the challenges they're feeling, reflect on that, then with expert content, kind of principle-centric, paradigm-shifting content, plus discussion with peers, actually make progress and develop skills. So I really, I think about, you know, creating great learning experiences, about creating space for vulnerability, authenticity, and that being the foundation of connection and the foundation of growth. Yeah, it's that human side of the learning, right? It's the, it's the fact that we are people and we're having this human experience. We've got some we can collectively share it with and learn from each other as well. This was really fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today, Will. Thanks for articulating all of these important ideas. Really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really great questions and always a fun conversation. Thank you. The people in your organization are hungry for opportunities to learn and grow, and leaders have a huge opportunity to meet that need by investing in the right solutions. Now is the time to look for partners that deliver high quality content based on proven learning science to create lasting results. Thank you for joining us today. For more helpful resources, visit us at franklincovey.com.